Around 5% of the world's population has gotten at least one jab against the coronavirus. You did it! Many believe the vaccines will end the pandemic, but there are also fears and misinformation about them. One such fear is over a new technology used in some vaccines for the first time. mRNA. mRNA vaccine. Messenger RNA. The mRNA. mRNA. Many fear that mRNA vaccines can manipulate human DNA. This is not true. Let's find out why. It's easy to confuse DNA, RNA, and mRNA. They have similar abbreviations that relate to genetic material, but they have very different functions. DNA contains the genetic blueprint that determines our body's various traits. But viruses, like SARS-CoV-2, have their own genetic material, and RNA stores exactly that. RNA is also found in the human body and plays a role in protein synthesis. Viruses use the same mechanism to reproduce in human cells. Renowned virologist David Baltimore from the California Institute of Technology won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. He explains what exactly an mRNA is. The messenger RNA is the way that the cell communicates with all of its various parts to make sure that it's making the right proteins for the, for the appropriate time. Uh, so for instance, our muscle cells make muscle proteins because they have muscle messenger RNA. So the question is, how are mRNA vaccines different from traditional ones? Traditional vaccines typically use a weakened virus or proteins found on the virus to trigger the body's immune system. Your body then builds up antibodies to fight the infection. The BioNTech, Pfizer, and Moderna vaccines use this cutting-edge technology to give us immune memory against the coronavirus. When these mRNA vaccines are used, a person receives genetic material called messenger RNA that works like a computer code. That code tells some of the cells in your body to create a harmless spike, one that looks just like those on real coronavirus proteins but it only creates the spike and not the actual virus that causes a COVID-19 infection. When your immune system sees those spikes, it gets a sort of a preview or practice run of what a real virus looks like, but without causing any disease. Your immune system starts making antibodies, and these antibodies recognize the spikes, latching onto them and blocking them from attaching to other healthy cells. And your immune system has now learned how to attack and destroy the virus. Once the mRNA code has done its job, the cell it's inside breaks down the mRNA instructions and gets rid of them. For RNA vaccines, there's no possibility in our cells that the RNA can become DNA because those are two different structures and they are also different places in the cell. So the DNA is in our cell core and the RNA just goes into the, um, the outer parts of the cell, the cytosol, where it is then um, uh, read and made into prote proteins. So the mRNA never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where our DNA is kept. Another advantage of mRNA vaccines over traditional ones is that they're more effective and have fewer side effects in clinical trials and the rollout so far. We make uh, a lot of flu vaccine today using chicken eggs, mm -hmm. but there are many people who are allergic to the proteins in chicken eggs, so they can't take the vaccine. A vaccine made on the principles of Moderna or Pfizer vaccine would not have that problem. Experts like Professor Baltimore are taking it a step further. They are sure that mRNA vaccines are the future of medicine. It's so easily manipulated that we can make a vaccine in a relatively short time and have it available for the whole world. So while we are still learning about how successful mRNA vaccines will be in preventing COVID-19 infections against various strains of the mutating virus, what we do know is that they do not change our DNA.